Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you so very much for joining me today as we continue the theme of the week, the other little ships, the other little ships. As Jesus was crossing the Sea of Galilee with the disciples, we are told that there were a convoy of ships, other little ships in Mark chapter four, verse 36, that were following him. And we're looking at some of those other little ships. We're looking at words that represent what Christians need in their life. And these are some ships. We're in the ship with Jesus, but there's some other little ships. There is membership, which means you should belong to a church. There is worship, which means you need to exalt, I need to exalt God's greatness. There is fellowship. We're the body of Christ and we have a role to play in the body of Christ. Now let's look at another little ship, uh, the ships that were out there with Jesus, the caravan of ships. Let's look at just one more ship. And the other ship, the fourth ship we're gonna look at is stewardship, membership, worship, fellowship, stewardship. Now what is stewardship? What is that mean? Well, the Greek word for steward is ekos, ekos. Now, you've heard that word, but you don't know you've heard that Greek word. In fact, most of our English words uh, are a uh, derivative of some Greek word or some Latin word. So let me give you the Greek word again for a steward, ekos. And ekos means house house. And our English word that is built from this Greek word is eco or economy, economy. And a steward is somebody who is managing the affairs of the house. And stewardship is critically important. We are stewards. Now, what does it mean? What does stewardship mean? And why is it such an important ship? Stewardship is simply the managing, managing and being good custodians of what belongs to somebody else, of what belongs to somebody else. Um, when my son went to his prom, I allowed him to use my car and he took the car and he filled it with gas and he washed the car and he was very careful because he knew that the car belonged to someone else. That's what stewardship is. Being a good manager, being responsible for someone else's property. Now for a Christian, stewardship is this. It, is, it says God is owner, God is owner. And we are managers. God is owner, we are the managers of everything. And we, God is the owner of those T words, time, talents, treasures, and thoughts, those T words, time. My time does not belong to me. It belongs to God. God gives it to me and I should be a good steward of my time and not waste it frivolously because time, once you lose it, you cannot get it back. Talents. The talents I have, God has given me those talents and I'm just a steward of them. God gave them to me, they belong to God. I should be a good steward of them and try to develop them and mature them and use them for God's glory and other people's good. My thoughts, even my thoughts belong to God and I should try to think the right things. My treasures, my resources belong to God. God is the owner, I am the manager. That is what stewardship is all about. Or we could break it down into three words. God's ownership. God owns everything. God's ownership. Psalm 24 verse one says, the earth is the, let me read it. The earth is Congress, is the, it belongs to Congress. No, the earth belongs to a political party. No, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, including you and I, the world and all the people belong to him. 
So what does that establish? It establishes God's ownership. And nowhere in the Bible do we read that God has transferred the deed of ownership to you and I. We brought nothing into this world. When we came into the world, when we leave the world, we will take nothing out. God's ownership. Then what role do we play? Human stewardship. God's ownership, human stewardship, and which means we are managers and custodians of what God created, and then divine human partnership. God gets things done through divine human partnership. Now, listen, many times we think that when God blesses us with a lot of resources, that we're supposed to splurge and use those resources on us. Um, but God blesses us so that we might use our affluence, that's our wealth, for influence. Luke chapter 16, verse 9 says this. Here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. And the way you make friends is by benefiting others. Taking an interest in other people is the way that you make friends. Then, then when your earthly possessions are gone, they will welcome you into an eternal home. So when God blesses me, then I should use my affluence, regardless of if it's, if it's, if it's power or possessions, I use my affluence for influence to help other people. Don't get caught up in what's called the consumption assumption. What's the consumption assumption? The consumption assumption is the assumption that when God blesses me with uh, some money or with a raise, that I am supposed to use that uh, con that on the, my personal consumption. That's what it is. That it's all for me. That means I'm supposed to build a, um, a bigger house, or upgrade my wardrobe. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. But ultimately, the surplus that God blesses us with is, is not for your consumption. Sometimes God blesses you so that you can be a channel of blessings to somebody else. And this is what Jesus had to uh, teach some very greedy brothers who were feuding over an inheritance on one occasion about um, the importance of using our resources, being good stewards of our resources. And it's a story found in Luke chapter 12, uh, verses 16 through 21. And uh, I'm going to give you some D words. So let's look at verses uh, 16 and 17. And then I'll give you the first word that I want you to look at. It says, then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. That's good. He's been blessed. He said to himself, he's talking to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. So he's got a dilemma. That's the first problem, his dilemma. What is his dilemma? His dilemma is he's been, he's been so blessed, he doesn't know what to do with the surplus of blessings that he has, all right? So that's the problem. Look at verse 16 and 17 again, and we'll look at verse 18 at the same time. Verse 16, 17, and 18 again. It says, then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. Verse 17 says, he said to himself, what should I do? I don't. And what I want you to notice is when he's talking to himself, notice how many times he uses the word I or my. I or my. What should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. He is totally oblivious to the fact that God is the one who blessed him. He doesn't mention God. He doesn't talk about other people who helped him on his farm. He just talks about me, my, and I. Verse 18 says, then he said, I know I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. First of all, he has a dilemma. What was his dilemma? He's been blessed so much, he doesn't know what to do with the surplus of blessings, the surplus of grain. He has a bumper crop. It's been a good year for him. So he has a decision to make. That's the second D. And that is, what will he do with all of these, these this surplus of grain? And his decision was uh, that he would tear down his barns, 
uh, draw up some blueprints for a bigger farm with bigger barns so that he can store more for himself. That was his decision. Now, the, the problem is not his dilemma. The problem is never the fact that we've been blessed. The problem is with his decision because he was not a good steward over the blessings. Now, look at verse 19. Verse 19 says this, and I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. So you see his dilemma, he had too much. You see his decision, he decided to tear down his barns, build bigger barns to stir up his grains. And then the third D word is his delusion. His delusion, he thought because he had a surplus of grain stored up, that he could just take it easy, relax, and he had it made. But look at verse 20. Verse 20 says this, verse 20 says, but God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you work for? And that's the fourth D word. The fourth D word, first D word is dilemma. He has a dilemma. Second D word is decision. He decided to turn down his barns and build bigger ones. The third D word is delusion. He thought that because he had something in the bank or something uh, in his silos that he was set for life. But guess what? He has a demise like we all do. And I have never seen a, a, a Brinks money truck in a funeral procession. You, you, you have to leave it all behind. We are just stewards. We don't own it because if we own it, we would never have to leave it. It was his demise. He died. And then look at verse 21. Verse 21 says, yea, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but, have, but not have a rich relationship with God. First, the fifth D word is his departure. He left it all. He departed. And he did not have a rich relationship with God. How do you have a good relationship with God? When God blesses you, there's nothing wrong with that. You have a decision to make. When you, have, when you got a dilemma because you've been blessed, here's your decision. Lord, instead of me taking the blessing and storing it up in silos for myself, maybe I need to store up some of that grain in some hungry bellies. Because all around him was hungry people who needed some of the grains that he was storing up. Amen. And he should have stored it up in some hungry bellies. So he should have used the grain and sold some of the grain to get some money to help kids with some scholarships. Or he maybe could have used some of that grain, sold some of the grain, make the, the resource, used the resources to help to uh, fund some people who are homeless, to help people who are homeless. In other words, he made the mistake of the consumption assumption. That is that the minute God blesses us, the assumption is it's for my consumption and it is not for my consumption. I am just a steward of it. God blesses me so that I can be a blessing to someone else. And when he died, he left it all behind like all of us will. We will leave it all behind. No one knows how much money Howard Hughes left behind, but we do know one thing, whatever it was, he left it all behind. And so will you and I. You know, whenever you play Monopoly, it's easy to get greedy. You ever play Monopoly? And you know, when you have all the houses and all the apartments, or excuse me, all the hotels, and you've got property and you got money and people lending on your property and you're able to sue them. And if they don't have the money, you're able to bankrupt them, even put them in jail. Well, guess what? I don't care how much property and money you have. At the end of the game, let me tell you what happens. At the end of the game, everybody takes their money and they put it back in the box. And then they put a cover on the box and the game is over with. The money goes back into the box, the green, the red houses, everything goes back in the box. And one day, all of us, we're going to go back in a box, it's called a casket. And once we go into the box to call the casket, all that money, all those houses will be passed on to someone else because we cannot keep it. But what we can do is we can be good stewards of it, stewardship, and use the resources and blessings God has given us 
to make a difference in the world. And when we do that, that is when we are rich with God. It's one thing to be rich with people, but it's better to be rich with God. And that's why stewardship, stewardship is one of the ships in the caravan connected to Jesus. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today and help us to make sure that we're good stewards of our time, talents, treasures, and thoughts. It belongs to you. All things are yours. We're simply managers. Forgive us for how we have mismanaged so much and help us to consciously be good managers of everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me today. And look, everyone needs a church home. If you don't have one, we'd love to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Regardless of where you are in the world, you can become a digital disciple. Contact us here. Email us at St. Stephen Church. New start. New start at ssclive.org. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, I pray you have a blessed day the rest of the day. And until we meet again tomorrow, you remember during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane. And never forget, God is in control. I'll see you tomorrow.